baseball, map, field. Oh, hey boosters, thank you for tuning in. I got this foreign newspaper, it's from Tokyo. Do you see that? This is so cool, I can't wait to show Mr. Jericho. I've been trying to raise my cultural awareness and uh, learn facts from other cultures. It's kind of hard to read. But I'm working my way through it. Boy, I can't wait to show Mr. Jericho this. Boys and girls, boosters, if it's your first time tuning in to Neighborhood Bible Time this week, thank you for joining us. My name is Mr. Macon. I'm going to get us started in a word of prayer, then tell you about a few things you can expect today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for what you've done already this week. Lord, thank you for the day before us and what we can learn from your word and from the missionary story. I pray that you would guide the events of today. In Christ's name, amen. Boys and girls, yesterday we left off at an exciting part of the Jump and Jim story, and we're going to find out what happens next to Jim and Joey. We also left off in the T-Fom story about T-Fom being loaded in a helicopter and flown off to the mission station to receive some medical treatment. Boy, I can't wait to find out what happens to T-Fom. And we're going to go over the clean page in the Bible story. So much to do. But just like we've done this week, we've got to get started with the booster cheer. Let's go. Roll. One, two, get those fingers out, boosters. One, two, three, four, boy, three, boy. One, two, three, music whistle, please. We are boosters, wild time boosters. Everywhere we go, people want to know who we are. So we tell them who are, who are, who are we. Hey, Mr. Megan. Oh, hey, Mr. Jericho. What you reading? Well, I got my hands on this uh, Japanese newspaper, and I'm trying to, you know, broaden my cultural awareness and practice foreign languages, things like that. Why don't you read me some? <laughs> well, I'm not so good at the, the language part yet, so I thought I'd start by recognizing foreign pictures, and I'm pretty good at it. See? There's a lily field. Hmm. hmm. You know, I've been doing a lot of research on Japan. Yeah? You just know there's over 125 million people living in Japan? Oh, really? And unfortunately, only 1% profess to be Bible-believing Christians. Oh, wow. It's so sad. and It just makes me think. Just imagine, perhaps if you know, all these young boosters surrender the lives of God to go over to a country like Japan yeah. and pour their lives into those people. Well, that'd be great. Here, show me a newspaper just in a second. Hey, just imagine well, the effect it would have on that country of over 125 whoa. million. What? How'd you do that? That's not too important. What's more important, boosters, is how can we learn more about God's word so that we can invest more into other people and to pour our lives into them. And so, it's time for us to review the five facts of my everlasting life. Now, boosters, it's time to learn fact number four. Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, what that means, boosters, is that we don't have to worry about our eternal soul suffering an eternal death. No, boosters, when we receive Jesus, our eternal soul will be with him in heaven for eternity. Now, let's start from the beginning. Fact number one, God loves me, even though I'm a sinner. Fact number two, God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. Fact number three, 
whosoever believeth in Jesus, and then fat number four, ready? Fat number four, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You want to figure it out, Mr. Macon? Oh, not yet, I'm thinking. Well, while you get that figured out, let's go see how T Farm is doing in AT. Yesterday, we learned how T Farm had been badly hurt in a landslide. The missionaries were able to take her to the mission station in a helicopter. When she got there, she was so excited to see Granny Holdeman again. T Farm, how glad I am to see you, she said as she gently rebandaged her cuts. I have something that will make you happy, a brand new dress. Tifam smiled and smiled. She could hardly believe it. I have something else that will make you happy too, said Granny. I couldn't help but notice the longing look in your eyes the day I asked you to read from the Bible. I, I would like to learn to read, Granny, said Tifam, but I'm afraid of that book. The Lord Jesus doesn't want you to be afraid, Tifam. Not afraid? How wonderful that would be. As soon as she was strong enough, Tifam was able to go to school. Every day she came to class. She learned to sing new songs. She learned to count. And most importantly, she learned to read. Every day the teacher would tell them stories from God's book. Tifam tried not to listen. She would draw pictures on her desk with her finger. One day, the teacher was sick. So Mr. Turnbull came to teach them. He led them all outside where he read to them from God's book, the story of Nicodemus. Tifam counted clouds in the sky. Then she counted mountain peaks. But still, the words entered her heart. What did it mean to be born again? What would it be like to be a child of light, a child of God? Long after Mr. Turnbull had dismissed the children, Tifam sat there, thinking. Soon, Granny came up to her. What's the matter, Tifam? She asked. Oh, Miss Granny, Tifam wondered. What does it mean to be born again? Nicodemus asked the Lord the same question, she said. I'll try to explain. When you were born, whose family were you born into? The Oristeel family answered Tifam. So you are a child of Oristil by birth, right? Yes, said Tifam. To be a child of God, you must be born into his family, answered Granny. But how? Tifam could hardly believe she dared to ask. First, Tifam, you have to admit that you're a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God hates sin, but he loves you. He wants to save you. If you'll put your trust in the Lord Jesus and receive him as your personal savior, you can be born into God's family. Tifam hesitated. If I, if I put my trust in the Lord Jesus, Papa will put a curse on me, she said. Tifam, Granny Holdeman said, We've been praying that your father will come to follow Jesus as well. But you can't be afraid of his curse. He put a curse on Victor and nothing happened to him. That's right, thought Tifam. Nothing is wrong with Victor. Oh, Granny, said Tifam, I want to believe. I, I do believe. And she tore her voodoo charm from off her neck. I put my trust in the Lord Jesus. Excited, she stood up. Thank you, Miss Granny. And she ran to tell Mr. and Mrs. Turnbull. Guess what, she said. I am of the gospel. Tifam continued to go to school and she learned to read very well. One day, the missionaries gave her her own black book, the New Testament. Tifam decided not to think about what her papa would do when he found out. Then one day he came for her. Tifam, he said, your sister Rosa and her husband are sick. 
So is baby Pierre. I need you to come home and help care for them. The sun was setting over the mountains when they neared the dirt trail that Rosa lived on. Look over there, said Oristiel. That is the new voodoo temple I am building. The first thing I will make is a new voodoo charm for you. Papa, Tifan began, but Oris still didn't hear. He was already on his way to the new temple. Tifan continued until she saw Rosa. Rosa, look, she said, holding out a bag. I have brought food for the baby and corn to plant in the garden. Good, said Rosa. And before we plant the corn, Papa can crack his whip so the spirits will keep it safe. It won't help, said Tifan. Won't help, asked Rosa. Tifan, have you changed? First Victor listened to the missionaries, and then Mama, and now you. I tried not to listen at first, Rosa, answered Tifan, as she pulled out her New Testament from her sash. But these words entered my heart. They have filled my heart. What words? What are you talking about? Just then, Oristil's voice broke in. Here is a new charm, he said, handing Tifam a tiny glass bottle. Tifam looked at the charm, but she knew she could never wear it. Oristil noticed her hesitation and his eyes narrowed. It is late, he said. We will talk in the morning. Tifam shuddered. The next morning, Tifam awoke to hear the sound of baby Pierre crying. She got out of bed, picked him up, and set him on a mat next to the low fire. Then she heard Oristil's voice calling her. Tifam, come and bring the seed. It is ready to be planted. She brought out the seed to her dad. Before we plant it, Oristil said, I will pray to the spirits that they will fix these evil missionaries. Papa, said Tifam, the missionaries are good. Oristil looked at Tifam. Tifam, have you changed? Are you of the gospel? No, Tifam said. Her heart was racing wildly. Oristil looked at her for a minute longer then turned and limped back to the temple. Tifam's eyes filled with tears and they ran down her cheeks. Oh, Lord Jesus, she cried. I am so afraid. Please, please help me. Suddenly, she heard Pierre scream. She ran into the hut to see that he had fallen into the fire. She took him off the hot coals quickly made mud and dabbed it on his tiny chest and cheek. Rosa came running and Oristil came limping in as fast as he could. Why weren't you watching the baby? Asked Oristil. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rosa. Papa, will you let me take him to the mission? They can help him. No, cried Rosa and she took Pierre into her arms. No, it will not help, said Oristil. And once more, he asked Tifam, Tifam, are you of the gospel? Tifam stood straight and tall. Yes, Papa, she said. The Lord Jesus loves me. He died for me. He loves Rosa and Pierre. He loves you too. And she reached into her sash and once more pulled out her New Testament. This book tells us about him. Papa, in a rage, Oristil tore the New Testament from her hands. Jumping up and down all around her, he ripped the book into pieces. Then he stopped. Tifam, if you stay of the gospel, both you and baby Pierre will die. Boys and girls, all her life, Tifam had lived in fear of the spirits. Would she turn her back on the Lord now? Would Pierre be okay? We'll find out tomorrow. You getting it figured out, Mr. Macon? I think so. Aha! <laughs> <laughs>
Are you okay, Mr. Beckett? Yeah, I think so, but I got to figure it out. <laughs> got a little wet in the process, too. Yeah, well, I'll tell you the truth. I felt a little refreshing to get cleaned off. You know, that reminds me of important biblical truth. Yep. Making a clean slate. Boosters. Oftentimes when we sin, we try to hide things from our parents, maybe from one another. But can you hide your sin from God? No. I want to illustrate this using a stack of cards. Now, we may think to ourselves, oh, I really want that thing and no one else is looking. I can take it. God may not. I, God always sees those things, boosters. He sees what we think. He sees what we do. And he hears what we say. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place. To illustrate this, Mr. Megan, I'm going to have you choose a card. Okay. On this deck. I'm not going to notice your card. I'm not going to see Any it. card? Any card. Okay. Take a good look at that card. All right. Now go ahead and show the boosters. Okay. I'm going to look away. Did you get a good look at it? Uh, yes, I think so. All right, go ahead and put that card right back here in the deck, anywhere you wish. Okay, I'll put it over here. Now, boosters, I didn't see what was on the card. But we're going to try something here. Just keep this in mind, boosters, that God sees everything we do. Understand, too, he sees all the good that we do. As I said, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Don't think because you may have done something good and no one else saw it, Oh, woe is me. No one knows. God sees those things, boosters. But he also sees the bad things we do that no one else sees. Mr. Macon. Yeah. Is this your card? <laughs> yes, it is. That's great. Go and show the boosters. Wow. Boosters, look at that. Wow. You know what? It is important that we come clean before the Lord. That's right. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Matter of fact... Mr. Guru is going to tell, tell us now about Come Clean Color. Hmm. Ah. Mm. Mm. I'll be with you in just a minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. Mm. Ah. Yeah, here we go. Ah, I love having clean teeth. It's just, you know, when you brush your teeth and they're clean. And I woke up this morning and it, it's just, uh, you know, that, that taste in your mouth and clean teeth is just nice to have. So in representation, I also, you know, I like to get, the, I use my shampoo to get clean uh, with a bath and a shower. Uh, I also like to... I like to clean things and just do some cleaning here and dusting things off. Why? Because you kind of have dirty things. It's people don't like that. It's I want things to be clean. Really, really like cleaning my car with all the detailing and things. I like to have a clean car. How about you? And I got my cleaning brush. I got, uh, how about, did you ever think about dishes? If your dishes are dirty? you're not gonna pull them and put them on the, play, the table for company that comes over to your house. So I've got a uh, very clean glass here today and a clean plate, my clean dishes. Did that a little while ago. So, and the representation, here's our wordless book again here. I've got a my clean white shirt and as we go to, my heart was dark with sin till the Savior came in. His precious blood, I know, has washed it white, has washed it white as snow. We're going to talk about the clean page today in the wordless book. And so as we think about that, go in your Bibles to 1 John chapter number 1. Everyone likes something to be clean. 1 John chapter number 1, the Bible says in verse number 8, if we say that we have no sin, 1 John chapter 1 verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us and to clean us and to make us pure from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, 
We talked about sin a couple days ago. We talked about the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanseth us from all sin. And the blood of Jesus can make us clean, make our hearts clean. If he is, if, or we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. I'll say it just one more time. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, sometimes we think to clean up. We clean the outside. We clean the screen. Clean shirt just got washed. We clean our teeth with brushing them. We clean uh, our dishes and everything looks good on the outside. But actually, boys and girls, the inside needs to be clean. To clean the outside, Jesus Christ, he went ahead and did uh, had a sermon actually to the Pharisees and Sadducees who kept 245 laws and rules and regulations on the outside. They were impressive spiritually. They were kind of not spiritually, but they were impressive of keeping the law, all the 200 and something commandments that they kept. Yet Jesus said, the outward of your appearance looks clean, but inward you're dirty. Inward, your heart is full of uh, full of sin and, and pride and, and the things that are keeping you from entering into the kingdom of God. The clean. Uh, we need to be cleansed. We need to be clean. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 64, and verse 6, sometimes we think we're okay on the outside. We can't just clean up on the outside. One man told me a story that He'd always take a shower to feel like he was being clean and it just wasn't doing anything for his heart. He couldn't clean his heart that way. He needed the blood of Jesus and he finally found Christ, put his faith and trust in Jesus, invited Jesus into his heart. He said he's felt like his heart was cleaned ever since. In Isaiah 64 and verse 6, the Bible says, but we are all as an unclean thing. All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities or our sins, anything that breaks God's law, has consumed us. Um, and it says that our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. We think, see here that our all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. But wait a minute, I do good things. I'm pretty good at home. But it says that are the best of our righteousnesses, if we haven't turned our heart and life to Jesus Christ, are really as an unclean thing. So we came in the door. We would stand up. And mom would say, my mom would say, boy, stop right there. I've just cleaned the house. And she would look at us boys. We'd be standing there at attention there. She says, you boys, you boys are filthy. Oh, well, we're just, we've just been outside playing. We're not, we're not that bad. Well, God says our righteousnesses are sometimes filthy. We're, we need to be cleaned. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Isaiah 1, 18. I'll just read it so you don't have to turn over there as we only have a few moments left. But the Bible says, come now and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And we're not talking about the dirty wool or the dirty snow that falls to the ground and gets trampled on. Do you like snow? Oh, I sure do. Uh, it doesn't snow here very often, but when it does snow, before it hits the ground, before it gets driven upon and gets trampled upon, it's white and it's, it's pure. And the Bible says when we reason with, how do we reason with God? Do we make a deal with God or make an exchange? And when God says, okay, well, you know, I'll trade you this for that. God says, here's the exchange. I've given Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. And if you accept that payment and ask Jesus to come into your heart and accept his only payment to take you to heaven, except above for the only way to heaven, then he says, that's kind of the exchange. I've given my son to die on the cross. You accept the payment for your sin and ask him to come into your heart. That's the exchange. The Bible says that's the reasoning. 
Come now and let us reason together. It's not a reasoning where like, I've got my own way to heaven. I'm going to clean up myself on the outside. My good is going to outweigh my bad. And I'm going to do this and that. And then I'll probably just, I can make it to heaven. No, he says, let's reason with this. And here's the reason. I've given my son to die on the cross to pay for your sin. His shed blood will wash away your sin. And so it says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. The clean page. Are your sins, are your sins washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? Has Jesus' blood cleansed you from all sin? If you don't know for sure you're on your way to heaven today, may that be. May you say, um, God, I need to deal with my sin. I realize I'm a sinner. I realize that the payment for my sin was Jesus dying on the cross. And I want to invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart to take away my sin and be my Savior. Have you done that today? Why don't you do that? Wow, we sure are learning some great, amazing truths from God's Word. Let's take this opportunity to sing another song. All right, boosters, if you stand with me, if you would, we're going to sing, My Lord Knows the Way Through the Wilderness. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. Strength for today is mine all the way, and all that I need for tomorrow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. Great job, Boosters! Well, Boosters, you know, great job seeing with me. And now it's time that we transition to our Ten Commandments. Now, Boosters, it's time to learn about Commandment number seven, Commandment number eight. Command number seven says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Boosters, it's God's design that one man and one woman marry for life. And so that concedes seventh commandment, one man, one woman for life. And then commandment number eight, this signifies thou shalt not steal. And so we say, commandment number eight, do not take what does not belong to you. So then let's start back from the beginning. Commandment number one, God is number one. Commandment number two, do not bow. Commandment number three, watch your mouth. Commandment number four, go to church. Commandment number five, honor thy father and thy mother. Commandment number six, do not kill. Commandment number seven, one man, one woman for life. Commandment number eight, do not take what does not belong to you. Well, thank you for showing the Ten Commandments there, Mr. Jericho. You know, that reminded me, I think someone could easily use something like juggling to illustrate Bible truths. I saw somebody juggle on YouTube once, and so I thought, hey, I think I'm going to start practicing now. Huh. Yeah, I think I'm getting the hang of it. Yeah, you can pick it up pretty fast, don't well, you? Well, some things just come naturally. In fact, let me try something. Can you kneel down right here? Sure. What do you hand for? Uh, well, you'll see. Go ahead and kneel down. Okay. Face to boosters. Good. You comfortable? Yep. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, why? Oh, no. Come on. I promised my mom I'd be home at the end of summer. If I let you do this, I might not make it back. Well, I'm doing all the hard work. You sound kind of scared, Mr. Jericho. You know what? Speaking of scared, this reminds me we need to get back where Jumping Jim. Now, boosters, it's time for day number four. The story of Jumping Jim. We left off yesterday. Jump and Jim and Joey had ended up in a cave. They made their way out of the cave because it was so snake infested. They finally got out. They were tired and exhausted and heard two men walking by. They quickly jumped through the bushes. One of the men had a gun and he heard a noise. He began to make his way towards where Joey and Jim were hiding. Meanwhile, Jesse, Mr. Clark, Mr. Nelson had arrived at the island. A storm began to come in. It began to rain. We began to look for signs of the boys. Jesse yelled out, Hey, look over here! I found some footprints! We began to search these footprints and follow them. 
The rain began to wash them away a little bit. They yinnied on and tried to search more and more, but finally the trail went cold. There's no more signs of any more footprints. Jim's father began to weep. He, he had put so much work out, they put so much effort, they still couldn't find their son. He was worried. Mr. Jesse's father, Mr. Clark, we need to pray. We need to find out where these boys are at. Now, Jim's father wasn't much of a praying man. He wasn't saved. He had grown up in the church, but had never received Jesus Christ as his savior. Boosters, many of you have grown up in church. Many of you have been to many neighbor Bible time rallies. But I assure you, there's some of you, you have never received Jesus Christ as your savior. For some reason, you have held out for so long. You've never actually made that step of salvation. You've heard the message many times. You need to get saved. You need to get saved. Jesus' father heard that many times too when he was in the church. You need to be saved. Your sins will find you out. You remain separate from your sin. Because, boosters, as we said, sin separates us from God. If we never receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, we'll live eternally in the lake of fire. The Bible says... In the book of Revelation, he that was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast to the lake of fire. Boosters, that's a place that I don't want to go. And I don't want any of you to go. To spend all eternity in the lake of fire, separated from God forever. No boosters. I'm thankful that I already see Jesus Christ as my Savior as a 10-year-old boy. And that one day, I'll get to spend eternity with Jesus, my Savior, in a place of total joy and peace in heaven. Boosters, you have a decision to make sometime this week. The people at Westgate Baptist Church are praying for you, that your soul will be saved. Back to the story. The men knelt down and began to pray. Jesse's father, Mr. Nelson, prayed first. His father, you know our state. We're trying to find these boys doing all we can. We ask you, Father, that you show us more signs. You'd help us to learn from this experience. Jesse began to pray. His father, I'm praying so much for these boys to get saved. You know where they are. And I please pray, Father, that you keep them safe. Don't let them die without knowing your son, Jesus Christ, as their savior. Jesse was a good friend. Mooster is a good friend. Is someone who does right, will encourage you to do right. Jesse had been trying to encourage these boys to come to church and hear about salvation. He had been praying for these boys to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Boosters, those of you that are saved, those of you that know Jesus, be sure to tell your friends and your cousins that maybe they don't know. Invite them to the church. Invite them to the rallies. Boosters, I tell you, Jesse is that type of friend that you want to be. Now, as men began to continue searching, for any clues what might happen, the weather began to get very, very bad. The rain was making it hard for them to see anything. Back at home, Jesse's mother Mrs. and Mrs. Nelson were together. Jesse's mother and Mrs. Nelson began to think, man, what's happened? Mrs. Clark, she began to do a heart check and began to blame herself for all the things that had happened with her son. If they find my son, they return, we're going to have to make some changes. She had good intentions, boosters. But good intentions will not get you to heaven. Good intentions will not change your eternal security. Good intentions will not bring you back to God. The Bible says, Jesus Christ said himself in the book of John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That man began to walk closer and closer to Jim and Joey's hiding place. He got closer and closer and closer. Jim and Joey's heart began to pound deeper, and deeper and deeper. He was a rugged man and a gun on his hip and a hat and a beard. He got closer and closer. He peered back that grass. There the frightened boys sat. They stood up quickly and they ran as fast as they could. The men ran after them. Come back here! Joey was a faster runner than Jim. And Joey took off as fast as he could. Jim tried his best to keep up. 
But the man behind him was gaining ground, getting closer and closer. And finally, that man jumped and tackled Jim and brought him down. Jim tried to shake loose and get away, get away. That man picked Jim up and put him on his shoulder and to carry him away. Unbeknownst to Joey, Joey was still running. He finally made it out a good distance away. He looked behind him. And Jim was gone. Oh no. Jim and Joey were now separated again. Joey was so tired from running so hard he collapsed. After a bit, he finally was about to get up. Right before Joey was the biggest, nastiest. You have to come back tomorrow to find out what happens next. Wow, Mr. Jericho, Jim got caught by those bad men and Joey. I wonder what scared him so bad. As I said, you just have to tune in tomorrow. This brings about important truth of being tied to sin and Christ setting us free. I wonder if I can borrow your rope for a second, Mr. Macon. Sure. We're going to let this rope... This is going to illustrate us. And I'm going to see this rope right here. This is going to illustrate this world. You see, boosters, before we're saved, the Bible describes us as the servants of sin. We're tied to sin. There is no way out of our sin. And as we're tied to that sin, many people try their best to break free. They have an addiction they can't shake. Boosters, there's no way out of our sin. Go ahead and pull on that, Mr. Bacon. Okay. There's no way there's no way that this rope and this rope can separate each other. No. That's how we are with, with sin. Now, boosters, there is one way in which we can be separated from our sin. The only way is the blood of Christ. We apply the blood of Christ to our life. And then, then and then only can the miraculous happening of being separated from our sin can take place. That's a great truth, Mr. Jericho. Thank you for this. That is wonderful. You know what, Boosters, I've been so impressed with the illustrations he's been able to do that I've actually contacted a magic company and they're going to send me my first trick tomorrow. I can't wait for it to come here. When it comes here, I'm going to show you it. I, I am just so excited for that to get here. Well, meanwhile, Mr. Jericho, could you lead us in another song? That's right, Boosters. Stand with me if you would. All right, Boosters, I'm going to invite you all to stand with me once again. We're going to sing Everything's All Right in My Father's House. Once more in Haitian Creole. Let's review the verses. Our first verse, tout bagay va bien. Everything's all good in my father's house. The next verse was, pa va gem peche, laka pa There will be no sin in my father's house. Yesterday, the verse we learned, mueble ale la, mueble ale la. I want to go there to my father's house. And the next verse we have, this simply means, do you want to go to my father's house? Do you want to go to my father's house? Let's sing. Great job, boosters. Boosters, what a fantastic day. And you know what? I can't wait. My magic trick that I ordered should be here tomorrow. When it gets here, I'm going to show it to you and we'll learn it together. I just can't wait for that to get here. Well, boosters, as before, if the Lord's been convicting you, working in your heart about some of the things that you've heard today, please talk with your parents. Ask them about the truths that the Lord's been speaking to your heart about. And if there's any way that we could be a help, please contact Westgate Baptist Church. 
Our phone number is 503-524-3500. And one of our secretaries can direct you to somebody who can take the Bible and talk with you about some questions you might have. Well, boosters, let's wrap this up in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this fine day that you've given us, this chance to learn from your word, to hear these exciting stories, learn from this missionary story as well. I pray that you bring us back tomorrow, ready to learn too, in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, boosters. We'll see you tomorrow.